This is Twit. So what can you tell us about the history of Flutter? How did it get started? So it got started as an experiment where we took a, uh, the WebView technology and said, well, WebView is constrained to have to render web pages because that's what it does, and spent many years optimizing the web rendering engine in Chrome and thought, well, what would happen if we took away the constraint of having to render web pages and just broke every compatibility thing we could imagine? And so we did a little experiment, and in a week we got some pretty significant performance gains. We thought, okay, maybe there's something here. And so then we took that, that experiment and over several years refined it and eventually out came Flutter. And was it uh, originally, I mean, how did Dart come into the equation? Yeah, so originally it was in JavaScript, and there was a, a very large DOM component that was implemented in C++, similar to how a web browser works. And as we were mm -hmm. working on things, we realized that that really wasn't all that necessary. And if instead you picked a language like Dart that you could compile down to native code, then you didn't need the C++ layer, and we could lift all that mechanism that in a browser is, is baked in and expose it to developers and make it much more powerful so developers could reach in and subclass anything in the whole stack all the way down from the widgets to the rendering layer to the compositing layer. The whole stack is available for developers to customize and build beautiful fluid UIs out of. And I, I think this is an important point to make because we're making this already pretty early on is that this is really compiling down to actual native code, uh, to ARM code uh, running on the, the, two, the two platforms. And one of the things I think that that's important about that, and you can uh, expand on this if I if I miss I'm missing something, but you know instead of rewriting your app so that it works with DOM elements and then has activity based on JavaScript, you're actually talking about writing the same sort of code, although in Dart that you would have written in Java on Android and uh, Objective C on the iOS side. Is that is that a fair cups fair uh, take? Yeah. That Yes, that's correct. So it's structured um, in many ways like other uh, mobile frameworks, like Coco or like the Android framework, where you have a, a language that you're writing in, and that drills all the way down to the the GPU, and either either outputs uh, OpenGL or outputs Vulkan, depending on the capabilities of your device. Okay, so if I'm an existing iOS developer or I'm an existing Android developer, uh, what's going to be different about my workflow? Is it still pretty much talking to an IDE and pushing a button at some point and watching it on my simulator then deploying it to my uh, hardware app? Yeah, the basic flow is very similar, but we've accelerated it. So with the hot reload feature, it, the sort of as you type, you can click this one button, and in less than a second, your app live updates and sees uh, you can see the code change you've made. And in fact, it keeps all of your state. So for example, if you have an animation running while you're editing the code, your app will change and the animation will continue to run to completion with your new code in there. And part of the way this works is because the framework is built on this uh, functional reactive paradigm where you explain what you want the UI to look like, and the framework takes care of taking the, the UI from its current state to that state, you only have to explain the target state, and the hot reload can change your app from wherever it was, even some state that no longer exists in the code, to the state that you've described. And so talk a little bit more about this reactive framework. Is this, a, is, are, is this same sort of reactive in the word like React and React Native? Uh, yes, it's similar in, in structure to React.js and React Native. The, in this in the style of the framework, in the sense that you have a, we call it a build function, I think React calls it a render function, but same idea, where you sort of describe the structure of what you're, you want your UI to be. Uh, what happens after that is a bit different than in React Native. So in React Native, those then get translated down to uh, constructing OEM views, so either views that were written by Apple or views that came with your Android phone. Uh, in Flutter, you describe what you want in the sort of reactive framework, and that gets built all the way down to the middle. 